ask, what advice can you give to listeners who may be considering careers in development or public housing administration or just public service more generally? Well, I think that as we've been talking here today, it should be clear to people that want to stretch beyond the typical roles that they would play in life. I would urge them to reach out, whether it's in education or with uh, social services or with housing and community development. You can change the world if you step forward and immerse yourself in your community. I'm hopeful that Woodlawn will be one day a multicultural, ethnically mixed community with market rate families and middle income families and low income families. It will be a place where everyone can live, work, and enjoy. As a postscript to our interview, you mentioned before we sat down that a young lawyer did some work for you when you were the chair of the CHA by the name of Barack Obama. Can you tell us, our listeners, a little bit about your work with him, what he did with you in a conversation you started to recall to us about his political aspirations? Well, Barack, we were working on some aspect of a legal matter for CHA, and um, he just said to me, Vince, Although I like what I'm doing and I like community organizing and all of that, I really want to do more at a political level. And I know I've never been a politician or elected official, but I really, that's what I want to do. And so (laughs) years later and after all of that's happened, I reached back in my memory banks and I said, oh my God, Barack was absolutely serious about that. (laughs) Did you take him seriously at the time? I did not. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. All right. Well, we're going to take a very quick break and we'll be right back with some Chicago hot takes. Don't go away. Hi, this is Jason Zukas, the host of Have You Heard? The UC3P News Quiz. Curious to know what our show's all about? Here, have a listen. Iceland has fielded a surprisingly successful team in recent World Cups. Iceland's coach, Heimar Hallgrimsson, has a skill set not limited to just soccer, however. Which of these things does he not do on the side? (laughs) A, work part-time as a dentist. B, dress up as an Icelandic troll during Christmas time. Or C, sell car insurance to friends and family. Oh, man. I feel like he definitely does the troll thing. (laughs) Like, I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't be shook if he was a dentist. (laughs) I'm going to go with car insurance. That's correct. He does not do that. (laughs) If you enjoyed that clip, come check out all of our episodes by searching for Have You Heard? UC3P on your preferred podcast platform. Or join one of our upcoming live shows. Just go to facebook.com slash hyhnewsquiz for more info on our next show. See you there. All right, we're back. This is Chicagoland. We're here with Vince Lane. We just wrapped up our conversation with him. So we're going to just start it off. Jump into those hot takes. Jump into the hot takes. All right, Vince, your favorite Chicago neighborhood, excluding the one you currently live in. My favorite Chicago neighborhood, I guess, would be uh, Hyde Park. Best thing about Chicago in the spring? The lakefront. I turned 77 a couple weeks ago. Happy belated birthday. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, I love taking my walks and keeping getting my exercise in along the lakefront. Do you put ketchup on your hot dog? No. Mustard. Cubs or White Sox? My dad was an avid White Sox fan, and I sold newspapers there every weekend and some weeknights. White Sox. Best public park in Chicago? Without a doubt, now, it's Millennium Park. 
I mean, that's where all the action is, and that's where I hope Jackson Park and Washington Park will become in about a few years. It's interesting because those parks are much older than Millennium Park now. Yes, they are. Yeah. And if we can bring in culture, new culture, new music, new restaurants, new housing, it could be probably not ex- as extensive as Millennium Park, but we could be doing some exciting things in Jackson Park and in Washington Park. Finally, what issue should Chicagoans be paying more attention to? I think the issue is the income disparity. Because of the way politics is working and Wall Street is working, we don't have the entrepreneurs within individual neighborhoods that once existed. Create some financial instruments that would encourage the new people that are coming to a new community like Woodlawn. Create instruments to help people become homeowners. Create strategies as Woodlawn and other communities gentrify and the values of the homes that people have been living in for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, create mechanisms for them to use that appreciation not to just sell the house and walk away, but as this community becomes vibrant, use that equity to invest in those small businesses or in other ventures and still live in the community and take advantage of of what is going on now. All right, that wraps up our interview with Vince Lane, former chairman of the Chicago Housing Authority. I learned a lot. I'm always fascinated by the issue of public and affordable housing, and I think uh, the city is kind of a very unique place to study it. Likewise, and it was really interesting to hear about his vision for the future of neighborhoods in Chicago, particularly on the south and west side of the city. We hope that the policy issues that we've that Chicago has struggled with in the past will inform the city going forward. Yeah, and there were so many more questions that I wanted to ask but just didn't for lack of time during that interview. Uh, he talked about um, communities being sick and kind of I really wanted to follow up with, okay, how do you diagnose a sick community and what are the like parameters which uh, inform your decision whether or not to uh, tear down a development or to rebuild a development. So a lot of meat for further conversation and further thought there. Uh, hopefully this is just the first of several conversations we'll have on Chicago land about affordable housing in Chicago. Yeah. I also thought it was interesting that he used gentrification at the end of our conversation as not necessarily a negative term, which I think it's been taken to you know, be this term that encapsulates the disparities that exist in cities um, and communities beginning to not exist. But it sounds like to him, we can use that definition as something that's positive for a community when value begins to go up. Not only value, but also quality of life and services available. And he, we were talking offline after the com- conversation that we recorded about some kind of mechanisms that can be used to help communities maintain residents as they gentrify um it's really technical stuff sometimes um but so important in the city as we move forward especially with you brought up the uh jackson park development of the obama center Mm -hmm. um yeah we encourage listeners to you know pay attention to what's going on in your community how is it changing how is it developing um are those developments intended for the people who already live there and how can we you know, make it so that developments do improve the quality of life for the people who have been living in those communities for decades. And with that, thank you so much to everyone for listening. This is Chicago Land from University of Chicago Public Policy Podcasts. I'm Kira Sturgill. I'm Steve Crano. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>